Japan's recent statement, if Taiwan is in trouble, Japan is in trouble, infuriated the CCP, which in turn threatened retaliation. Before Beijing could even react, Japan itself struck first, withdrawing all of its photoresist operations from mainland China. Several Japanese companies almost monopolize over 90% of the global high-end photoresist market, especially EUV photoresist needed to manufacture the most advanced wafers. Their control exceeds an astonishing 95%. In China, over 90% of KRF and ARF photoresists used in the production of mainstream wafers come from our eastern neighbor. The blogger stated that if Japan really intends to create a chokehold on China in photoresist, China's manufacturing industry, from smartphones to artificial intelligence, could face the predicament of making bricks without straw. Actually, this is no small matter. Over 70% of the world's photoresist is in Japan's hands. EUV photoresists below 7 nanometers are 100% supplied by Japan. Simply put, China's high-end chip materials depend on Japan for 90% of its supply. Once the supply is cut off, it will directly impact the semiconductor manufacturing process. Shinitsu Chemical and JSR, these two Japanese companies have a monopoly in the global photoresist market. Japanese companies control over 95% of the high-end EUV photoresist market, accounting for more than 50% of the global market. China's overall photoresist import dependence on Japan is as high as 80 to 90%. In 2023, Japan suspended production citing supply chain instability, and in October 2025, Japan officially imposed punitive tariffs of up to 25% on 19 categories of key semiconductor materials. Against this backdrop, Shinitsu's exports to China plummeted by 42% month-on-month in November. The blogger stated that China currently has over 1,200 EUV lithography machines, 90% of which rely on after-sales service from Japanese companies Canon and Nikon. In November 2025, Canon and Nikon further tightened their services to China, which is linked to Japan's policy of restricting spare part exports through case-by-case -case approvals. This has led to China being strangled again. Chinese industry estimates suggest that existing spare parts inventory for lithography machines can only last about three to six months. If Japan continues its supply cuts, the normal production of Chinese wafer fabs such as SMIC and Huahong Semiconductor will face significant pressure. Why would Japan's supply cuts to China photoresist cause panic among the Chinese authorities? because photoresist and lithography machines are among the most crucial equipment and materials in wafer production, and these are precisely the key links that Beijing heavily relies on but cannot replace in the short term. Japan also possesses a key technology in lithography machines, DUV, deep ultraviolet lithography machines, commonly used in 90, 40, and 28 nanometer wafers, which are crucial in mobile phone wafers, automotive wafers, and home appliances. Therefore, some analysts believe that if Japan truly tightens its photoresist supply to China, it will not only affect China's advanced manufacturing processes, but could also impact civilian equipment such as automotive wafers, home appliances, power management, and even 4G base station wafers. Why would this cause panic among the Chinese Communist Party? The reality is that Chinese manufacturers can only provide relatively low-end, eye-line lithography technology while relying entirely on imports for cutting-edge technologies like ARF and ARF immersion. Some have pointed out that if the core of lithography technology is drawing circuits on a wafer, China's current technology is like a pencil, only capable of drawing simple, low-resolution lines. In response, some experts predict that if China lacks Japanese lithography materials, its semiconductor production capacity could potentially regress by 5 to 10 years. Currently, ASML, the world's most advanced lithography machine technology company, has restricted exports of lithography machines to China. The CCP is heavily reliant on ASML's technology. If Japan completely restricts photoresist exports to China, it will create a US-Japan-Netherlands iron triangle blockade against Beijing, meaning China's semiconductor industry will enter a dead end. The current situation is also a silent irony for the CCP. In fact, from 2014 to 2024, Beijing invested over 42.37 billion in the so-called Big Fun Phase 1 and Big Fun Phase 2, aiming to solve the bottleneck problem in wafer manufacturing truly. However, it has yet to achieve a real breakthrough in wafer manufacturing. 
On the contrary, it remains highly dependent on foreign suppliers for wafer design software, EDA, manufacturing equipment, and materials. On July 14, 2025, the Center for Security and Emerging Technologies, an independent think tank in Washington, D.C., released a report showing that ASML of the Netherlands and Nikon of Japan dominate the Chinese lithography machine market. From 2019 to 2024, the supply of domestically produced lithography machines in China saw almost zero growth. Only Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment Company Limited held a 4% market share in the low-end eyeline lithography machine sector. In contrast, ASML of the Netherlands had a 79% market share in China, while Japanese companies held 17%, ranking second. A CSET report indicates that by the end of 2024, Chinese companies have made slow progress in lithography machines, chemical mechanical polishing, thin film deposition and packaging testing, as well as etching and cleaning tools, and remained heavily reliant on foreign suppliers. Data from consulting firm Tech Insights in May 2025 further contradicts this assessment, showing that China purchased a staggering $41 billion worth of semiconductor equipment in 2024, accounting for 40% of global sales, but domestically produced equipment accounted for only 11.3%. While the Chinese authorities' attempts to poach technology have drawn criticism from many foreign manufacturers, this approach cannot truly solve the technological challenges. Industry insiders point out that lithography machines represent a complete nanotechnology process. Building a lithography machine requires achieving nanometer level precision in the entire machine, all parts, and processes. Some Chinese experts also state that catching up in lithography machine development cannot be achieved simply by investing money. Science requires creativity and creativity presupposes interest in a supportive environment that allows for trial and error. Treating science as a task or even a command will only backfire because not everything can be counterfeited. Items like aero engines, wafers, and lithography machines are difficult to replicate using only samples. On November 19, 2025, Japanese companies such as Canon and Mitsubishi Chemical terminated their supply of key photoresist consumables to Chinese technology companies. They also withdrew their service teams from China and seized related maintenance services, which may affect the operation of some production lines. In November 2025, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry added 12 categories of core semiconductor materials to its export control list, including high-end ARF EUV photoresist. This resulted in supply restrictions on 42 Chinese companies. Specifically, Japanese companies such as Tokyo Oka Kagyo and Shinitsu Chemical have already suspended the delivery of photoresist raw materials to some Chinese customers. A message circulating online states, according to recent news from domestic semiconductor industry media, Canon, Nikon and Sanlin Chemical, among other Japanese giants, have collectively cut off supplies, completely halting the supply of core photoresist materials to mainland China and suspending lithography machine repair services. One netizen commented, is this how they respond? Japan is withdrawing all of its lithography machines and photoresist business in China, and China is withdrawing two giant pandas. The CCP, presumably hampered by Japan's control over photoresist, can only announce, Japan will soon be without giant pandas. The last two pandas on loan to Japan are about to return home. Recently, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi again made wolf warrior remarks, claiming that Japanese Prime Minister Sanye Takeichi crossed a red line that should not be touched, and that the CCP has the right to re-account for Japan's historical crimes, etc. Just as relations between the CCP and Japan are rapidly deteriorating, Beijing has issued a travel warning to the public, claiming that traveling to Japan is unsafe. Airlines have also begun offering free refunds, and online reports indicate that 491,000 tickets to Japan have already been cancelled. However, the reality has been a major embarrassment for the CCP. Chinese tourists are a major source of visitors to Japan. In the first three quarters of 2025, 7.48 million Chinese tourists were projected to visit Japan. According to the Japanese newspaper Ashai Shinbum, despite the CCP's travel warning to Japan, Shanghai Pudong International Airport saw a steady stream of passengers arriving in Japan on November 15th, and the atmosphere was relaxed. A young couple in their 30s stated that they were already aware of the CCP's so-called advice from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but had no intention of changing their planned trip to Japan, saying they had no interest in politics. A recent Chinese woman who had just graduated from university said, 
Japan makes me feel especially safe. Even if I could get a full refund on my ticket, I wouldn't change my plans. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs just issued a safety warning for travel to Japan, and long queues are immediately forming at Pudong Airport. The Chinese embassy in Japan has repeatedly warned people to avoid the risks, but who would have thought that long queues would show at the international departure gate of Shanghai Pudong Airport early this morning? Tourists with suitcases and traveling in groups pack the hall. The scene is more crowded than imagined. These are Chinese tourists visiting Kiyomizu Dera Temple in Tokyo, Japan. These are Chinese tourists visiting Shinsabashi, Osaka, Japan. Ironically, despite the Chinese authorities' explicit appeal to Chinese citizens not to travel to Japan, many families still happily fly to this country. One Chinese man explained, That's because the experience in Japan is excellent. Whether in tourist areas or cities, all goods are priced fairly. Secondly, the service is excellent. You can experience the Japanese kneeling service. You know, a friend of mine told me that he bought a cup of coffee at a coffee shop and accidentally spilled it when he put it on the table. The waiter ran over and said, Sir, I'll get you another cup, I'm so sorry. Even though it was his own fault, the Japanese attributed it to not in place service. This man said that the environment in Japan is very good and people voluntarily take their trash home. Even on the subway, you don't see anyone talking loudly on the phone because everyone wears headphones. However, after the CCP's actions, the number of Chinese tourists visiting Japan has decreased somewhat. In response, veteran Japanese media personality Akio Yaita shared on Facebook that the Chinese government's continuous travel warnings led to a surge in cancellations of Chinese tourist trips to Japan. Many previously crowded tourist attractions in Japan suddenly became much quieter, while Taiwanese tourists became remarkably popular. One tourism operator even told him that demand for flights from Taiwan to Japan exploded after the tensions between Japan and China. Tickets for many flights from Taiwan to Japan are now extremely difficult to obtain. Furthermore, Japanese businesses are particularly grateful to Taiwanese people for their calm, patient and friendly attitude towards businesses, as well as their stable spending. This diplomatic crisis between China and Japan has ironically brought Taiwan and Japan closer together. Some Japanese shop owners said that although fewer Chinese customers would affect their income, they were deeply moved by the continued support from Taiwanese people. Furthermore, many local governments in Japan are more actively engaging with the Taiwanese market, offering guided tours in traditional Chinese and Taiwan-exclusive events. They have even held promotional events in Taiwan, demonstrating their sincerity. It seems the CCP has truly shot itself in the foot. Not only has it offended the Japanese authorities, leading to a potential supply disruption of photoresist, but despite all its antics, independent thinking Chinese citizens are still enjoying trips to Japan, inadvertently fostering closer relationships between Japan and Taiwan. These experiences by the CCP also confirm the old saying, a just cause enjoys abundant support, while an unjust cause finds little. That's all for today. If you enjoy our content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with a friend. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time.